Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh Barak, y'all could just move Yahweh. Those that are gathered here at Teshua, and those of you that are listening by via of live stream, we do Barak Yahweh for this day, for every day. Because every day is a blessing unto Yisrael. Another day he has allowed us to breathe, to get up. To do what? What is our purpose? To Barak him. To obey his Torah, his Mishpah. To allow the Ruach HaKadosh to lead us into all things. There's a scripture in Torah that we'll get to, and it makes this statement. Those that are born of Yahweh, it says, cannot sin. Cannot sin. And if we will observe that just for a moment and judge your own love, we should, as a people of Yisrael, when we read Torah, everything that we read should cause us to search our love. To search our love for the leaven, the things that are not of Yahweh, the things that displease Yah. Because it says that those that have the Ruah of Yahweh cannot sin. Cannot sin. And I stand on that wholeheartedly. Because as we even look at our example, Yahshua HaMashiach, was he not in the flesh, a fleshly form? Or was he in a Ruah? Was he in a spiritual form when he walked among men on the Olim? Could he sin or could not he sin? He could not sin, even though he was in the flesh. Why? Because he was led by the Ruach. So what we should do as a people, we need to know and find out what leads us, what guides us, what are we following? Are we led by the Ruach of Yahweh or are we just trodden behind just for the fish and the loaves? And when it comes time that our flesh or our meager means are not being met, where will we go? We go to the next best thing. When we turn our backs on Yahshua HaMashiach, we must be led by the Ruach. Some say, well, we're waiting for our chains to come. While we dwell in this flesh, there are things we're going to do. We're going to sin. We're going to fall. And sure, we're going to fall. But when we fall, we learn from that experience. The Torah of Abba Yahweh, he has those he had placed in the midst to teach us that we may learn. When we come to the knowledge of that, not to turn again, not to commit sin. But uh, the scripture says that a Sadiq man follows seven times. But he don't follow seven times in adultery after he received the knowledge of that. He just don't continuously sin seven times because he has received the knowledge of what a lie and what, what sin is. Because if we would go by that number alone seven times, we all missed the boat on that one. There would be no hope. There would be no hope for Yisrael. There has to be something that has to be clear and made known unto the house of Yisrael concerning that scripture. It says a Sadiq man, and I will get it not in this message, but I would like to continue on this um, in the Torah of Yahweh as we dig about this what is so called the born again experience. What it is, is it to be born again of the rock of Amba Yahweh? And um, let, let us begin. Let us start in Yochahan, John chapter 9, verse 1. In this chapter, John uh, talks about the man that was born blind. He could not see. He could not see. We as the house of Yisrael were a people that could not see. We was blind. We was blind. And even this experience of this man, as he was able to see after Yahshua HaMashiach touched him, he obeyed the Torah, the word that was given to him, that his eyes were enlightened. Can you imagine being blind? You can sit for a few minutes in the dark, and that does not really give you a full understanding of what blindness is, or a person that experienced blindness. But I believe once he was able to see that this was a new experience unto him, he was able not only to see physically, but he also understood the Torah of Yahweh even unto the depth that he defended Yahshua HaMashiach and what he had done in his life. And we as a people should defend Yahshua HaMashiach and what he has done, how he has transformed us. We was once blind in sin, were we not? But yet by the light of the Torah and us walking in the Torah, obeying Abba Yahweh, he has what? Opened our eyes. Hallelujah. And there's a statement that Yahshua Messiah even made even unto the Pharisees or those of those times, the religious set, yeah. that you think you see, but you're really blind. But once I open the eyes of a man, he could truly see. 
And that's what Yahweh has done for the house of Israel. We don't have to continually walk in darkness, Israel, as if we're a people that don't have any understanding or that we're just a stupid, yet we are saddest people. But yet the world should look at, unto us and say, those people, they have a knowledge that we do not have. What is it? And they should seek after that substance that we possess. Hallelujah. So let me begin reading. Yochanan chapter 9, verse 2. And you, you all just bear with me tonight. I don't plan to be long because I would like to get back um, to this. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Being born of Yahweh. And it says, And as Yahshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now you think about your birth. Your birth in this physical body. That Adam, when he was birthed, he was full of troubles. Iniquity and sin was placed upon his path because of what Adam did from the beginning. So from birth, we were born blind because this is of Yahweh. We did not know our way. We did not know Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach. We were babes, children, coming to this world without any kind of understanding. We, de we depended on a, a life or a power much greater than what we were that we may survive. It takes to rule our HaKodesh in this hour to survive, Yisrael. You're not going to survive. You're not going to please Yahweh by any other means. Because if you do try to go any other way, the scriptures say you're a thief and a robber. There's no other way but the way of Yahshua HaMashiach. So this man was born blind from his birth, and it says in two, and his disciples, the disciplined ones of Yahshua, asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man... Or his parents? Who did sin? Was it us who sinned before Almighty Yahweh that caused us to be in this body of, of death? Was it the ones that brought us into this world, our parents? Can we give the, the blame to our parents? What brought us into this world? And was it their sins that caused this? That this man was born blind? And Yahshua, in verse 3, he answered them. He answered them with assurance and he said, neither has this man sinned, nor his parents. Well, what was the purpose? Why was the man born blind? He says this, but that the works of Yahweh, who believes in the works of Yahweh tonight? Do we believe in the works of Yahweh? Hallelujah. But that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. That the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. That the works of Yahweh should be manifest in you, Yisrael. What is our purpose? That the works of Yahweh. What is the works of Yahweh? We must define what the works of Yahweh are. What are they? Are they after the likeness of this flesh? The lust and the pride of this life? Or are they walking in his Ruah? His understanding, his Torah. That is the mind of Yahweh. As Yahshua walked, he did all things to what? Please the Abba. How did he please the Abba? He walked in the Torah. Not only did he walk in the Torah, but most importantly, he allowed the Ruach HaKodesh that had been placed in him, in that body, in that flesh, to lead and guide him. He obeyed every, every, in every instance, every step of the way. He did not resort to his flesh, but he allowed the Ruach HaKodesh to lead him. We must allow the Ruach HaKodesh to lead us, Yisrael. No, we're not waiting for a dove to come from the Shemayans to land on us or a sign from Abba Yahweh. It doesn't take us tripping and bumping our heads that we may walk in the Torah of Yahweh. He's not going to send a Malachim to take you by your hands and walk you down this Debar or down this way, this path, this direct. But it's being led by his Ruach HaKodesh being manifested in this Yisrael. And he says that I must work the works of him that sent me. Did not Yahshua come from Abba Yahweh? He said he must work the works. Don't you know there's also a work for each and every one of us to accomplish and to finish? Did not Yahshua accomplish and finish all that Yahweh commanded him and sent him to do that was prophesied of Yahshua HaMashiach? So we must walk in the same path condition of Yah. And he says this while it is still day. Why? Because the night comes. Are we not in the night season? Yes, Have we worked the works? Have we done what Yahshua HaMashiach did? Oh, yes. He said that we, there's an even greater thing that we shall do, Yisrael. What is that thing? 
Hallelujah. Let us move on. The night comes when no man, no man can work. So in this essence, you see the urgency of Yahshua HaMashiach. He knew that he had a work that he must do. And this blind man was an example or a type of that work that the blind may see. We must see Israel, y'all. We must allow the Torah of Yah Yahshua HaMashiach to open our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5. He said, as long as I am in the, old, in the world, he said, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Have we been anointed? Have our eyes been anointed with that spittle, the substance of Yahshua HaMashiach? being rubbed into our eyes, a people blind, could not see, did not understand the world around him or the world around us because we were blind and we could not see. Verse 7, and he said to him, he, well, let's go back to verse 6, when he had thus spoke, he spat in the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go. He gave him commandment, instruction. He said to go. And wash in the pool of Siloam. And it says, and he went his way, therefore. He told him to go wash. Yes, he did. How far was that pool? Did that matter? How deep was the pool? Did that matter? What obstacles that he had to pass did that matter? That did not matter to that blind man. All he knew is to obey with, because he had a moon now, to obey what was spoken unto him. So he went his way. And he washed and came seeing. That's all right. See, if he would not obey the Torah, if he didn't press to go to that pool of Siloam, he would not have been able to see. If he didn't make the effort to get, he had to get there. Whatever, whatever means possible. There's a place that we must be, Yisrael, yeah, that we have to get to. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the obstacles, and we must get there. Why? That we may see, that we may understand what the works of Yahshua is, what they are, and what is our purpose. To be born. What is it to be born of Yah? To be born again. Many talk about that born again experience, and they think it's a little tingling in their flesh. It's, it's, not, it's, it's more than that. It's not just a tingling. They think that maybe... When we pass from this life, you're going to sin while you're in the flesh. And when we see him, then that's when our change come. No. It must happen before that. We must be in that like-mindedness. We must have that ruach before your change come. Because the scripture says, he that is filthy at that time, they're going to be filthy still. So there's a process that must take place, Israel, y'all, before we pass from this life. Oh, there, there's no more time. We must get it right in this hour. We must be led by the rock of Yahweh today, this very second. And we must stop what? The issue that destroys the house of Israel above all things is sinning against Almighty Yahweh. And unless our eyes are open and we're able to see, we will not be able to go on into perfection. Don't let no one fool you, Israel. We, we, this, time is short. We don't have time to be playing around. So where does the change come, Zakein Yaramiah? When shall we see this change? When are we going to be changed? Is it at the last trump? Sure, we shall be changed from this mortal body of flesh and of death to immortality. But you must understand, we're not the only ones that's going to pass from this flesh. Because there's a judgment that is coming, Israel. And your life must be re made ready now in this realm. Not waiting to then, because we wait to then, that's, that's too late. It must happen now. What well, they say, once we're, in that, once we're in that spiritual realm, we cannot sin. Did Satan sin? The scripture said he was a liar from the beginning. Is lying a sin? Is that against Yahweh Yahweh? Was he in a flesh body? No, he was not. There was Melikim that were cast down from the Shemayims that followed Satan. Were they in a physical flesh body like we are today? No, they were not. Did they sin? Yes. Hell was made for them. But because, as we heard, it has enlarged his mouth. Why? Why? Because there's a people, a nation that 
continuously sin against Almighty Yahweh. And there's a judgment that is awaiting. And if we don't have the Ruach HaKodesh, then we are going to be passed from the first death to the second death. What is that being separated from Abba Yahweh? No, your spirit's not going to die. Because there it says that the worms, they eat your flesh continuously. Continuously. They eat that spiritual body or that, that presence we shall be in or man shall be in at that time. Continuously. It do not go away. That's a judgment that is forever and ever and ever. Let us move on. Having said that, let us move on. Verse 8. It says, the neighbors, therefore, and I want you to understand what this blind man had to go through. He went back to his people, his kindred, to those that knew him in the city, in that place. And what did they do? They rejected them, him. They did not believe him. And this testimony that he had of Yahshua HaMashiach, even not yet knowing him or seeing him with his open eyes, but he obeyed the Torah that was spoken to him. Even in his blindness, he was able to obey the Torah. Hallelujah. Let us move on. It said, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind said, is this not he that sat and begged? Yes, yes, yes. Some said, it is he. And others said, it is one that looks like him. It's one that's like him. But he said, I and he. I am the one that was blind, but I'm able to see now. I am the one that sat by the roadside, destitute, could not see, begging, that I might have means to preserve this physical man. But I can see now. And they did not believe him. Some saw him and said, well, that, that looks like him. Some said, uh, maybe it, it could be him. And he confessed that it is, it is I. Therefore, said they to him, how were your eyes open? How are you able to see? Have your kinsmen or your friends, once you weren't enlightened, and you knew that there was more to this life than living by the lust of this flesh, right. that it seemed like they did not just recognize you, that they knew something was different, that something was changed? Mm -hmm. And you confess, yes, I have been changed. Hallelujah. I was once blind, but now I see. The Torah of Yahweh and the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach has cleansed me from all of my sins. And then look at you, said, a couple of weeks down the road, a couple of months, uh, Zakane Benjamin, he doesn't do that anymore. Is that the same man that I knew back then? How many of you had that said? How many of you have your kinsmen of those of your own household deny you and what Yah has done for you in your life, that your, your eyes have been opened? Hallelujah. Don't deny Yah, for Yah has worked something so marvelous, so beautiful in you, Yisrael Yah. So don't let what those say knock you down or take you down a peg or two, as it says in the story, as we know here at Billy Bud. They want to knock you down a peg or two. Don't give up the amuna that Yahweh has placed in your bosom. You press on and grow in Yahshua HaMashiach. He answered and said, a man that was called Yahshua, he made clay and anointed my eyes, and he said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. I was able to see. I obeyed what he commanded me. That seemed like a hard, tale to, a hard thing to swallow, isn't it? Wasn't a hard thing to swallow when you told those, no, man, I don't do that anymore. I don't smoke anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't do those things to please my flesh as I want to say. I don't do those things anymore. He said to them, where is he? He said, I know not. They asked where Yahshua was. And let us skip down to uh, verse 30. Because there was a lot that went on in the bayet. A lot went on in his life. Circumstances, trials, tribulations. So we're going to skip down to, in the same chapter of Yokohana, John chapter 9 to verse 30. It says that the man answered and said to them, Why? Wherein is a marvelous thing that you know that it's not from whence he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. And what he was saying in this instance, because they doubted that Yahshua HaMashiach 
was sent of Yahweh and that he was able to do this work. Because it said it, he has to be sent of Yahweh. He has to be a mighty man of the Ruah and of the Torah to do this. But they did not believe that Yahshua did this. Why? Because it was not according to their time and the way they believed that it should be done. So it says here in verse 31 as we move on, he says, Now we know that Yahweh hears not sinners. That is what the congregation of the people is saying to this man. They believe that because of his circumstances that he was this vile sinner, that he was born blind. But it says, but if any man be a worshiper of Yahweh, they're saying this to him, and does his will, him he hears. So they're saying there's no way that this blind man could have heard of Yah, heard of um, Yahshua HaMashiach of Almighty Yahweh. Since the world began, it was not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. So they even de deny the divinity of Yahshua HaMashiach. If this man were not of Yahweh, he could do nothing. So they answered and said to him, you are altogether born in sin. Well, we're not born in sin, Israel. Yeah. And do you teach us? And they cast him out. See, even in that short time frame of this man's life, this blind man, that he was able to come to a knowledge and a truth that even those that were so-called in those synagogues or in those high places, they could not even grasp. Yes. So it was more than just his physical eyes being open. But it was his lair, his heart, his, his nephesh also being open and being enlightened, Yisrael. Right, yes. We must be enlightened, Yisrael. Yeah. It's not enough for us to hear the Torah and to see, but we must allow it to take its work and its place in our lives. That we may work the works of Yahshua HaMashiach. It says here in verse 35 of the same chapter, it says, Yahshua heard that they had cast him out. And he went and found him. Did not Yahshua find us, Yisrael? He heard. There's no telling where he was in that city or in that place. But he went back to find that blind man. Aren't you glad that Yahweh... Sent Yahshua HaMashiach. Even though Yahweh let his presence did not dwell in the garden or on the Olam as it once was, or the, as it once did, but yet he sent Yahshua with the likeness of his Ruah back to a blind people that we may turn back unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? That even though we were enlightened, it seemed like we was all alone. Yahweh sent Yahshua HaMashiach yeah. just to give us a word of encouragement and a word of reassurance, Yisrael, yeah. that we may walk and continue to walk in this path of Sadiq, yeah. of being. Don't you know, he went through a born-again experience, if I may use that term. He was, we knew, made new, brand new. He wasn't the man he once was, yeah. but he was made new. And he said to the man, after he had found him, in verse 35, Yahshua heard that he had cast, they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe on the son of Yahweh? Do we believe on the son of Yah? Yahshua HaMashiach. And he answered and said, who is he, master, that I might believe on him? And he said in verse 37, Yahshua said to him, you have both seen him. He didn't even realize they were looking right at him. So he said, first, you have both seen him, and it is he that walks with you. Do you believe that Yahshua HaMashiach walks with you? There's a song that comes to my mind. Take Yahshua with you, or the Torah with you, everywhere that you go. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach is with you everywhere that you go? Everything that you do. Well, how is that true, Zakhan Yah Ramiyah? Because Yahweh done something that is so beautiful. He has placed his Torah. Was not Yahshua Hamashiach the Torah of Yah? He has placed the Torah in the lev of Yisrael. Hallelujah. So everywhere you go, the Torah of Yahweh is with you, Yisrael. Verse 38. And he said, Master, I believe. I do believe. I have emunah. To believe. 
And what did he do? It says he worshiped him. A beautiful thing. He worshiped Yahshua. He fell down right there. Now only one that has been cleansed from their past iniquities, from their sin, that is walking in the Ruach of Yahweh can truly worship. A hypocrite can't bring forth the oracles of worship unto Yahweh. A liar cannot bring forth the oracles of worship, of true worship unto Abba Yahweh, but only one that has been cleansed from their sins. So we've been seeing this blind man that was made enlightened, that the Torah of Yahweh has been placed in his bosom, that Yahshua HaMashiach has been revealed unto him, and yet he was able to fall down and truly worship because he was thankful. He was thankful of what Yahweh had done, what Yahshua had done unto him. He was once blind. We was once blind, Yisrael, but now do we see. Hallelujah. We have been transformed. We have been made new, Yisrael. Not renewed. When you renew something, now, of course, we, there's a renewed covenant. Hallelujah. But yet we have been made new. We have been born. Brand new. A child that comes forth from its mother's womb is brand new. If you get a piece of machinery or a piece of equipment or a tool that is rusty, that is wore out, you have to restore that. Am I correct? So that you may use it properly. Well, that is a type of restoration. But what I'm talking about is something that is totally new, that has been transformed. And only Yahweh can do that. Only Yahweh can take these bodies, these sinful bodies, put his Ruach there, that we will be made new, washed in the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us move on. Verse 39. And Yahshua said, For judgment I have come into the world, that they which see not might see. And they which see might be made blind. See, those that were in that tabernacle, in that place of worship, they could not see or come to understand what that blind man could understand. But yet they believed they could see. But yet this blind man which could not see was made to understand that this man has been said of Yah Yahweh, Yahshua, HaMashiach. Yes. And he says this also in verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Is the, are you saying that we, we're blind? We read the Torah every day. We fast and we pray, but yet you said that we are blind? And Yahshua said to them, if you are blind, you should have no sin. Let me read that again. Yeah. Yahshua said to them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see. Wherefore, your sins remain. Don't you see the, the, the tight hypocrisy in those people? That they believed that they were the ones, well, we see perfectly. Yet they denied Yahshua HaMashiach. And they believe that they have been cleansed from their sins. We're not going to be a people that are cleansed or fashioned after the likeness of Almighty Yahweh if we do not see, if we do not hear, if we do not understand the Torah and the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. Because yeah. if we don't understand that, if we don't have the Amunah to believe that Yisrael Yah, then our sins still remain. We have not been cleansed from our sins. Hallelujah. 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 Let's move on. To Yakahana chapter 10, verse 1, I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. And this is after the circumstance with the blind man. I'm just going to read this one verse. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold. See, that what, that's what the, those in that place that denied the validity of Yahshua HaMashiach, that did not believe the blind man, they tried to enter in other ways than believing that Yahshua HaMashiach that has been sent in the Torah of Yahweh is the only way. 
They believe there had to have been more than one way, but there's only one way for Yisrael, and that is Yahshua HaMashiach. So those that try to enter into the sheepfold any other way, but climbs up some other way, it says, the same is a thief and a robber. So there's only one way. As we sing the song, the toe of Yahweh is so high you can't go over it, so wide you cannot go around it, and it's so low you can't go under it. You must come in where? You must come in at the door. And that door is Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Way. Turn with me to uh, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. And I want to step back a little, and I will get back to this um, next time I do speak, Yisrael. But I want us to understand when the Torah speaks about the flesh or being mortal, and then the transformation from this mortal body to immortality or in a body that lives forever. Hallelujah. And we know that the word forever, Olam, Olam is Olam. Long during is forever, everlasting, evermore, and it says also perpetual. It's continuing. It does not end. It do not stop. It doesn't stop. Everlasting. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. It says here, there is a splendor of the sun. And surely there is a splendor of the sun when you look up at that bright mass in the morning or in the midday conditions of Yahweh. Nothing can match the brightness of that, of the sun. And another splendor of the moon. Does, also, does not the moon also give off a light? But its light is not as powerful as the light of the sun. So they both have light, but it's splendor. They have two different splendors, or one is greater than the other. And another splendor of the stars, another example of the splendor or the brightness, the stars have their splendor. For one star differs from another star in splendor. Is that not true? When you look up into Shemayim's on a nice dark, and it has to be truly a dark day, I mean a dark night where there's no lights, you can see the twinkling of the stars. You see some seem larger than others, some closer than others. There's some that are brighter than others. Because even though they're all the stars and they give off a light, yet they differ in the light. Let us move on. It says in verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. So that just gives us a form of understanding that we may grasp this resurrection conditions. It is sown in corruption. As this body, as we pass from this life, this fleshly body returns back to the dirt or in this corruption. And it is raised in, in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. But it is raised in splendor, in splendor and in honor. It is sown in weakness but it is raised in power. Verse 44. It is sown in a natural body. Was not Yahshua's body? His body, was not it sown into the ground? But yet his body did not see the corruption or corruption conditions of Yahweh. It is sown in a natural body, and it is raised in a ruah or in a spiritual body conditions of Yahweh. So this is showing us the difference. Even as we, um, if we would step back and think about Adam, the first man, and then Yahshua HaMashiach, they both had their splendor as being in the physical body. But yet Yahshua HaMashiach, he was made of a quickening ruah. Not that Adam did not have the Ruach of Yah, or the Ruach dwelling in his body, but yet there was no quickening of the Ruach. See, yet the splendor of Yahshua HaMashiach even extended the splendor of Adam, because what? He had the, the, the Ruach of Yahweh in totality, if I may use that word, in his bosom, and in his body. It says in verse 45, And so it is written that the first man, 
He was made a living ruah, a living soul, a living spirit, if I must say. And it says, and the last Adam was made a quickening ruah. Verse 46. How be it, how be it that was not found, was not first, which was spiritual, or which was ordained of Almighty Yahweh, but that which was natural, was not Adam, just a, a natural man? But it says here, the last Adam, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, was made a quickening ruah. I'm sorry, I jumped up. Verse 46. How be it that it was not first which was spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which was spiritual or full of the ruach. It says that the first man is of the earth, of, of the Olam, earthly, it says. And the second man, Yahshua, Hamashiach, he was from the Shemayim. As, it, as is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And that is of the Shemayims, such as they are also that are of the Shemayims. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, have we not been born in that image of the earthly things, shaping in earthly things? We shall also bear the image of that which is in the Shemayim. Only Yahweh can do that. Only through Yahshua HaMashiach can this new birth, which is being explained, us being endowed, if I may use that term, of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, that we cannot sin, Yisrael. Yes. Being born, this newborn birth of the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach, in these vessels, we must have that, Yisrael. Yes. Because even if we look at the life of Yahshua HaMashiach, when it came to a close, his life in this physical body, was he not ri risen? Did he not rise up? What caused him to come back from the dead or be risen from the ground? Was it of his own power? It was by the Ruach of Yahweh Almighty. What is our comfort, Zakin Yaramia? Our comfort is that if that same Ruach dwells in these mortal bodies, in these vessels, then these bodies shall get up, Yisrael. Having that transformation, was Yahshua just transformed or did he have that Ruach when he was in the ground? Did, it, did he just get that? Or did he walk, did he live the Torah of Yahweh even until to the stake? So, what's me, so must we as a house, Yisrael, walk in the Torah. We must live the Torah. We must eat the Torah. We must drink the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach, that the Ruach of Yahweh will endow us and fill us, that we will be raised, hallelujah, from this mortal body to immortality. Not being raised in corruption, but in incorruption, Yisrael. Verse 48. Let me read that again, verse 48. It says, as the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as, as, and as is the Shemayim, things that are in Shemayim, heavenly, such are they that are of the Shemayim. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavens, or the Shemayim. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood can enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Is that what that says? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom. Am I reading that right? No. Cannot. No. Cannot. No. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Neither can corruption inherit in corruption, and neither can incorruption of Almighty Yahweh can it inherit corruption. So Yahshua being sown in that body, being 
not corrupted, but in, in incorruption, yet he was, when he come forth from the dead, he was without sin, without corruption. His body didn't suffer any corruption, Israel. And we shall not suffer any corruption. Why? Because we, as a house of Israel, and I'm going to use this, should, we must, need be, we got to be filled with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Not filled with the world, not filled with the sins of our flesh, but filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Let us move on as I continue, Yisrael. Yachahanan, John chapter 5, verse 1. I have a couple examples here concerning when Yahshua had commanded certain ones, if I may say, to go and sin no more. Don't you know we have been given that commandment? Once we were enlightened, we have been given the knowledge of the Torah, filled with the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahshua, of Almighty Yahweh, he says unto Yisrael to go and to sin no more. He didn't say you could go and try not to sin, and if you fall in a little something, that's okay. If you keep falling, that's okay. No, once we come to the knowledge, and understand, hear what I'm saying, Yisrael, we cannot come to the knowledge that of, of adultery, that is a sin before Abba Yahweh. We know that. We understand that. We walk in that. And yet there has been a door that has been opened that we can commit that. And having that knowledge and that conviction, we go and commit idolatry. That is a sin before Almighty Yahweh. There's no excuses. No excuses once we have come into the knowledge. Because those that have the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahweh... And yes, let it judge our hearts, Yisrael, y'all. We, we, we've been walking on our tiptoes and playing, spinning around, just having fun, and not digging into what the Torah is saying unto us. We have to be a people without sin. There's no ways around it. No ways around it. It's time, see, what happens a lot of times, especially... If I may say, in the outside world, even in Israel, I can't say it that way. We, we look for every crack and every space for the flesh that it can't escape. You can't escape that. Those that are born of Abba Yahweh, the head of the world, Yahweh cannot sin. You can't escape that. He don't give us any chinks in that armor for us to go through. But yet we think as a people that we can, can skip around that. Well, Zakan Yaram Yah, it said that the Dhamma Yahshua, it, it continuously cleanses us from all our sin. And it does. The Dhamma Yahshua washes us, but not for us to walk in iniquity willingly, understanding the Torah, being filled with the Ruach of Yahweh. Because those that are filled, I want to stress that, the, of the Ruach of Yahweh cannot sin. And that time must be now, Yisrael, not tomorrow, right now. Not when we pass from this life. Because if we die in this body corrupted, we're going to be raised corrupted. We must die, we must pass from this life full of the Ruach, cleansed, that we may be raised incorruptible, Yisrael. No, it's not saying we live a, a life that is so-so and we be raised incorruptible. No, that's not. Yahweh, he wants us to walk according to his Torah. Yahshua HaMashiach did not sin. He was in a physical body. He felt the same elements. The same things we feel in our bodies, the same thoughts trying his mind. Because if not, then his offering, what he presented to Israel, it would not have been any good. He was placed in a body just as we are today, Israel. Yeah, yeah. Yet by him walking in the Ruach, the Torah of Yah, he was able to live totally without sin. Can we do that? Yeah. Yes, we can. Israel, yeah. we can do this. We can walk in this life sinless. Don't let no one fool you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that should be our desire, is to walk before Abba Yahweh spotless, without spot or blemish, hating this garment that is spotted by the flesh, hating it. Truly hating this garment that is spotted by the flesh, Yisrael. It's time that we shut the door to flesh. 
not letting it escape. The flesh has escaped long enough. We have had enough excuses, believe me, to last us. We, we, we're without excuse, Yisrael. Without excuse. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yachahanan, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Yehudim. And Yahshua, he went up to Jerusalem. If you recall me saying that this is concerning the statement Yahshua makes to go and to sin no more. And there, now there, is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, excuse me, a pool. That in the Hebrew tongue was called Beth Seda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk or people with, with um, diseases, deformities, pains, aches. Some, I believe, were blind. It says, a blind, halt, withered. They were withered, beaten down, waiting for the moving of the watchers. It says, For a lot went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever went first after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole whatsoever his disease or ailment was. And a certain man was there, no, a certain man, which had an infirmity 30 years. When Yahshua saw him, saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time at this case, or he was written with his, this disease or this problem for a long time. He says to him, will you be made whole? This is another example of Yisrael. Broken, beaten, sick, ailing, weak. And yet Yahshua is asking us, do we desire or will we be made whole? You know, that's some question you would ask to a man that has been waiting, no telling how long he's been at that pool, not being able to get down to the waters at that certain season. Asking him, would you want to be made hell? Don't that seem like a silly question? What, what do you think? I've been here all this time, grieving, hurting, not able to make it down to water. You going to ask me? Sure I do. This is our, this is our predicament, Israel, y'all, whether you want to grasp it or not. And yet Yahshua, Yahweh, Yahshua is asking, would you be made whole? Or what is your purpose? Why are you here? The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, or I'm pressing to get to the pool, another steps down before me, beats me to the pool every time. I've tried time after time again. It could not make it down to the pool. Verse 8, Yahshua says to him, rise. Did he tell him to go down to the pool? No, he just spoke to him to rise. He said to rise. Rise, Yisrael. Stand above your problems. Stand above your, your physical circumstances that you think are so deep that you cannot get out of it. Yahshua is saying to us to rise. Rise up. And he said to take up your bed and walk. All we have to do is rise. Yes. All we have to do is obey the Torah of Yahweh. It is so, isn't that simple? Isn't that simple? Just get up. Stand up. Stand upon the Torah of Yahweh. Stop being as a child or as men and stand up. Hallelujah. Stand up in the strength of Almighty Yahweh. He says to him to rise. Take up your bed and walk. And it says, he took his time, and the man, no, it doesn't say that. It says what? Uh, Immediately. Say it again. Immediately. 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 Why? Because he had enough of moolah that this man is telling me to stand, I'm going to stand. He stood up. It's time for us to stand up, Israel. Yeah. Yeah. It's high time for us to stop being entangled and bound by this flesh. But we have the power of the Ruach of Yahweh dwelling in us through the Torah of Almighty Yahweh in the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. We give in too easy. 
We shouldn't give in without a fight. We shouldn't give in at all, Yisrael. Yeah. But we allow this flesh, we allow this man of flesh space. Yeah. Yeah. And we should, we should kill it. Yeah. Every day it should be dead, that it not rise up. It must be hung, Yisrael. And it says, and immediately the man was made whole. And he took up his bed and he walked. And on the same day, it was the Shabbat. Yeah. That seemed to be Yahshua's specialty, yeah. to take a load and to heal and to make one whole on the Shabbat. What is the purpose on that, the seventh day of the rest? Hallelujah unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We will get into this deeper when I open this message up again, Israel. But it says, immediately the man was made whole. Why? Because he obeyed what Yahshua told him. He rose up. Why do we find ourselves not having the strength, seemingly, that we need to, to combat every day, Israel? Because we have not obeyed what the Torah says. We have not stood up in the power and the might of Yahweh, standing on the precious promises of Yahweh, on his Dabar, with the Munah, and just taking that first initial step. And as you take that first step, you go for that next step, you will find the strength into your bosom. Yes. Yahweh will strengthen you on this path. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. On this path of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And it says in verse 10, that the Yehudim therefore said to him that was cured, that was made whole, it is a Shabbat day. It is not lawful, according to what was written, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, He that made me whole, the same said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Yes. Then asked they him, What man is this that said to you to take up your bed and walk? And he, and he that healed, that was healed, knew not who it was. For Yahshua had not conveyed himself, Yahshua had conveyed himself away, and a multitude being in that place. He said, afterward, Yahshua finds him in the bayat, the great bayat, and said to him, Behold, you are made whole. You have been made whole, complete. Yeah. And what does it say to him? Sin. No more. Sin no more. Sin, no more. So this man was made whole. When Yahshua, the Torah speaks unto us, and we obey what the Mishvah of Yahweh say, because this is of Yahweh, we are made whole. Yes. Complete. If I may say, born. Not walking in the desires of the, of the flesh, but walking in the Ruach, what he desires us to do, and our desire being his desire, that is what to please him in all things. Yes, yes. So he makes this commandment, and this commandment is unto the house of Israel, this being an example of Israel. He says to sin no more. Then he gives a warning. Least a worse thing come to you. Yes. Don't you know we was in the mit, the muck, and the mire of Israel? Dying. This man was dying in his condition. Without anyone to help him, to take him down to the water that he may be made whole. When that Melikim came and touched the water, we're not able to make it to, if I may use this term or, or use that example, to the waters alone, Israel. It's going to take the touch of Yahshua. It's going to take the Ruach of Yahweh to lead and to guide us in all things. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That the Torah of Yahweh, that we will be made whole, Yisrael, made complete, born, new, born of the rock of Almighty Yahweh. To what? To just what Yahshua commanded him. He said, man, you've been made whole. You have been cleansed from your ailments, from your disease, from your sins, from your iniquities. Those things have been washed from you, and I commanded you, I'm saying unto you, because you have the Ruach, to go and to sin no more. Why? What? Least a worse thing come upon you. Don't you know there's a wor worse thing, Israel? If we trample the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, don't you know that this work that was placed in him 
was for us to be saved yes, yes. until the end of all things, for us to be complete, yes. to be made whole until the end of all things, that we may be preserved, Yisrael, yes. why would we go and sin willfully after coming to the knowledge of what the Torah expressed and been led by the Ruach of Yahweh? If we do that condition of Yahweh, then a worse thing will come up to, upon us. And it says, and the man departed, and he told the Yahudim that it was Yahshua HaMashiach, which had made him whole. And therefore the Yahudim, they persecuted Yahshua, and they sought to slay him because he had done these things, they say, on the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. But you know there's a Shabbat day that is coming. Hallelujah. Where all Israel will be made whole washed, cleansed from all of our sins and our, our, of our iniquities, Israel. Yeah. And that day should be right now. Yeah. Yeah. This is the time. This is the acceptable year, the time of, Yah of Yahweh, Israel. Yeah. Let us obey the Torah. Yeah. Let us walk in the Ruach HaKadosh that we stop sinning. Stop sinning, Israel. Yeah. Be led by the Ruach HaKadosh because those that are led by the Ruach, yes. they cannot sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second example I want to bring to us in Yokohana in chapter 8 concerning the Pharisees and the adulteress or the woman uh, that they committed adulterous, adultery with. Yokohana chapter 8 verse 1. It says in John chapter 8, verse 1, Yahshua went to the Mount of Olives, and in the morning he came again unto the great tabernacle. And all the people came unto him, and they sat down, and he taught them. Verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman. A woman. Are, are not we as Israel? A woman, or the woman, unto our Yahweh, hallelujah, Yahweh, brought to him a woman, it says, taken in adultery. We've been taken in adultery, Israel, yeah. time and time again, by our lusts, by doctrines that are not of the Torah of Yah. We have been taken by what we so-called called wealth in this nation or in the world, we have been taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to Yahshua, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, and they said, in the very act. We have been caught in the very act, Yisrael. Yeah. And they, they said this to them. Now, in the Torah, it commanded us, the Torah of Moshe, that such should be stoned. Yeah. And that is true. Such should be stoned to death. And they asked Yahshua this question. But what do you say? Don't you see how they're trying to put him between a rock and a hard place? Hallelujah. But you cannot put the Torah between a rock and a hard place. You cannot trap the Torah, hallelujah, of Yahweh. Yeah. So when they continue asking him, them, him he left. He lifted himself and said to him, He that is among you that is with, without sin, let him cast a stone at her. Let him cast the first stone. Yes, yes. And again, he stooped down and he wrote into the ground. And they that heard it, being convicted of their own consents, went out one by one, being at the eldest even unto the last. And Yahshua was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Yes. Didn't, did it not come when, when Yah's judgment, or the judgment of Yahweh, being wrought forth, or your sins and your iniquity, Yisrael, Yah, being made known to you, as you understand the Torah of Yahweh and the Ruach of Yahweh, all those ones that was with you in those acts of adultery, denying Yahweh, whether it was your kinsmen, whether it was your aspirations or your lusts, those things all forsook you. There was no one to stand with you 
when the Torah of Yahweh, the judgment of Yahweh, was, is not, has not the Torah of Yahweh been written, Israel? Yeah. Not only did he write it upon the tables of stone, but he had written it even in our lives, Israel. So all those things that were not of Yah, that displeased Yah, that caused us to error, when the judgment of Yahweh came, those things that you took comfort in for a moment, that you took pleasure in at that time, all those things forsook you. And that's what happened to this woman. But yet she was left there with Yahshua HaMashiach. And he says, and when Yahshua had lift, lifted himself and saw none but the woman, he saw none but the assembly. He saw no one but you, Yisrael. Yeah. He said to her, woman, where are your accusers? What are those that accuse you of sin, of this adultery, of this vile act that you may be put to death? Has no man condemned you? She looked around and she said, no man, master. And Yahshua said to her, her, neither do I condemn you. But even at this instance, no condemnation. Scripture said there's no condemnation to those that walk or that are in Yahshua HaMashiach. He said unto this woman to go and what? Sin no more. Was her sins washed? Was she clean? Was she cleansed? Would Yahweh, Yahshua give us a commandment that we could not go and that we could not accomplish that thing? He said to this woman to go and to sin no more. He said unto Israel, or to Jerusalem, to go and sin no more. We have been redeemed. We have been bought. We have been paid for with the price. And that price is the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's enough, Israel. What else do we need? What else is it going to take for us to walk after the Torah of Yahweh, to walk in the rock of Almighty Yahweh? Go and sin no more, he said unto the woman. Then spoke Yahshua again to them, of those that were surrounding him, saying, I am the light. I am the light of the world. He that follows me, that Radov, that follows, that walks after, that patterns themselves after me, shall not walk in what? Darkness. Shall not walk in darkness. Who walks in darkness? Only those that are blind. Were there not those that were blind at this time? Yes. They walked in darkness. Why? Because they did not, they did not, they did not follow after Yahshua HaMashiach. They did not, Radal, follow after him. Yeah. And it says on in that scripture, shall follow me, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the what? The light of life. The high of Yah. What is the high of Yah? The high of Yah. To walk in the light of his Torah. Our eyes being open. Were not the blind man's eyes open? Did he not dwell in darkness? Was not this woman? Was she in darkness? Yes. Was not her eyes open? Yes, they were. And what did Yahweh say to her? As he said unto the house tonight, Yisrael, go and sin no more. Let me read that again. That verse, Yachahana chapter 8, verse 12. Then Yahweh, Yahshua, spoke again to them, saying, I am the light of the Olam. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. We're surrounded by darkness in this time and this age, but we should not be of the darkness. We're in Mizraim, Yisraya, but we should not be of Mizraim. Shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light, the Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach, of life. Do we have that light tonight? Have not Yahshua HaMashiach been revealed to us? Have not our eyes been opened? Yes, right, yeah. We're not at one stage at one time. We were in darkness, but now we walk in the light of Yahshua, the Ruach of Yahweh. Well, you know what I'm going to say? Then let us go and sin no more. Hallelujah, way. Turn with me to Hebrews. Just bear with me, Yisrael. I'm not going to finish this tonight. Hallelujah. But I want us to understand, Yisrael, this, this is time. There's no time for us to be playing games. It's, it's no time to be walking, to be a people that walk falsely. 
It's time, as my avat would say, to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, tighten up your shoes, because there's a walk that we must walk, Israel. And we can't be a people that are trodden down and that's slumped over, but we must be enlightened by the light of Yahshua HaMashiach and press, press on. No matter what circumstances may come our way, we have Yahshua. No matter what hills, it's not the hills or the mountains, we cannot overcome them. We have Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. We're able to do all things through him. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. And this is concerning the offerings or the sacrifices, if I must say, of the high Kohen. That that act alone did not please Yahweh in the way that it pleased him of the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach for the sins of Israel. Yeah. Verse 1 of chapter 10, I want to begin reading. It says, For the Torah, having a shadow... Of tough things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices or those offerings, which they offer year by year continually, make the commerce of those that came that their sins may be cleansed, there too perfect. For when would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshipers once purged should have no one, no more conscious of their sins. But in those offerings of those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of the sins every year. So that was not enough. The bull oxes continuously had to bring a bull ox or a lamb or an offering or to the Kohen that it may be slain for the sins. But yet, even after all that, there was still remembrance of that sin. They were yet, um, if I may say, their minds yet haunted by what if that wasn't enough or that act did not please Almighty Yahweh. Verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of the bullocks and of goats should take away, for it is not possible that the blood of the bullocks and of the goats should take away the sins. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he saith, sacrifices offer and offerings you will not. But a body you have prepared me. Don't you know that Yahweh prepared the body of Yahshua HaMashiach? To be an offering for the sins of Yisrael. Verse 6. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, <clears throat> for sin you have no pleasure. Then said I, Yahshua is saying this, Lo, I come in the volume of the Torah, the book that is written of me, to do your will, O Yahweh. Above when he said, sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you will not, neither have pleasure therein, which were offered according or by the Torah. Then said he, Lo, I come to do your will, O Yahweh. He that takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Was well, not that which was in the beginning, these offer of these sacrifices, taken away by the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach? And, and even, the, even the first man, Adam, was not he also taken away? that the second man, Yahshua HaMashiach, may be established. Yes, yes. By the which, verse 10, by the which will we are made Kodesh through the offering of the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. And it says once for all, for all men, just one time. Let's not trample the dom or the body of Yahshua HaMashiach underfoot, Yisrael. And even as Yahshua being our veil, or the veil. If you will recall in the Torah, after Yahshua, if I'm not mistaken, he gave up the Ruach, yes. he died. There was a great thundering, earthquake, and it says also that the veil of the, of the, the temple or the, the, or the Kodesh place yes. was rent in two, that it was torn. 
What was the purpose of that? See, by the, 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 the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach and the offering of his body, which is also the veil for Yisrael Yah, that body being torn, being beaten, allowed us to come before the Abba. And Yahshua HaMashiach being our high co that we may bring an offering of praises and told out unto Abba Yahweh for what was done in the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. So even that veil being torn in the temple, was not the body of Yahshua torn? Was it not ripped, Yisrael, for us? Why? That we, we be able, that we may be able to come in unto the Abba, to enter in to Yahshua HaMashiach, that we may present ourselves boldly, not having any fears, being washed of our sins, and being grafted, if I may say, into this um, brotherhood, if I may say, with Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. that we could come before the Abba. Because in time past, you, you just couldn't come before Yahweh or come into the, the, the Kodesh place and just rip through that veil. It had to be through a Kohen. And he had to be right before Almighty Yahweh. But through the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach, look what that has done. Yeah. We're able to come before the Abba. Yeah. Boldly. Yeah. Crying Abba Yahweh. Yeah. Let me read on. It says in verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 10, And every Kohen stands daily, it says, ministering, offering, oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away the sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice of one offering, Yahshua HaMashiach, for our sins continuously, he also has sat down on the right hand of the Abba, Abba Yahweh, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made or become his footstool. Verse 14. For by one offering, one offering, yeah. amongst the thousands and the millions, the trillions of offerings, but by one offering, he has made perfect tamim. Perfect. Tamim. Continuously, them that are made Kodesh. Yes. Don't you know we have been made Kodesh, Yisrael? Yes. And that the Dom of Yahshua, his body, offers up this offering before Abba Yahweh. It says, Tahim, or con I'm sorry, perfect Tahim, but continuously, which is Tamim. Verse 15, wherefore the Ruach HaKodesh also is a witness unto us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, said Yahweh. I will put my Torah, my mitzvah, my Torah in their lives and in their minds, and I will write them. If their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. Now then, now where remission, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for the sins. So there's no other offering after Yahshua HaMashiach. There's nothing you can bring before Yahweh that will please him, because this is of Yahweh or that will cleanse you from your sins. It's only Yahshua HaMashiach. He's the only way, the only truth, and he's the only light, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Let me continue as I bring this message to a close. In uh, verse 19. Hallelujah. Wait, I want to... Okay. Verse 19. He says, This happened therefore, brethren, Boldness. Boldness. What is a boldness? It's you being able to step forward, to face off maybe your fears, maybe your doubts, but to, to, to boldly face it, no matter what the circumstances may be. Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the most Kodesh place. The most Kodesh place, that place where the veil has been torn. See, there was a time where the Kushu could not come, or there was a fear 
there as they come into the Kodesh place where their sins were offered by the Kohim. They knew that they could not even step foot in their place or they would be cast or struck, struck down. But we could come boldly to enter into the most Kodesh place by the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach by new and a living way. New. What is that new and living way? It's us being born or that birth of the Torah, the Ruah, the spirit of Yahweh in our bosom, in our bodies, in these tabernacles, conditions of Yahweh. By knowing the living way, which he has renewed us new for us, we have been made new. But yet the way of that old past, although that was, of, that was a first of time, has been set aside, and Yahshua, um, through his offering or his sacrifice of his body, allowed us to come into the presence of Abba Yahweh. By a new and living way, which he has renewed for us, through, it says, the veil. That is to say, his flesh. His flesh was the veil, conditions of Yahweh, that was torn. That we may, be, that we may enter into the most Kodesh place of Abba Yahweh. Verse 21. And having a high Kohen over the bayat of Yahweh, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of a munah of faith in Israel. Yeah. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, washed from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the profession of our expectation. Do you have an expectation tonight, Kedushal Yahweh? What is that expectation? What is it? What is your desire tonight? Well, mine is to walk before the presence of Yahweh without sin. And not to bring the body of Yahshua HaMashiach to, to shame. Let us hold fast to profession of our expectation without wavering, without wavering, conditions of Yahweh, without doubting. For he is faithful, that promise. And let us consider one another. Consider one another. What is that? Considering your neighbor. Well, who is your neighbor? It is your ah and your aho, Yisrael. Yeah. Let us consider one another to provoke to ahava, to love, and to tough works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting, encouraging, rebuking, reproving one another. And so much the more as you see the day or the last of these evil days approaching to its conclusion, Yisrael. So let us provoke one another, whether it's by rebuke, reproof. Show your hava to your ah and to your aho. If you see one that is being led the wrong way, well, the hava of Yahweh will correct that one, yeah. rebuke that one. Say, no, ah, this is the way to go. No, this, ah, call, this is the way you must walk. This is how you must do things. Yeah. If we have a hava, true the hava one for another, yeah. you wouldn't let somebody just walk out on the tracks. I know we use that example a lot. And a train is approaching, drunk, not hearing the sirens. You wouldn't just allow that one just to, to uh, meet his end or his doom without trying to warn him, would you? You see someone on the tracks and a train's coming, you wouldn't blow your horn or do what you can to save that life or to warn that, that person of the destruction? Yeah. Well, we must have that same mind to one another, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have some more verses, but I'm going to move to, uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. And uh, I will revisit it, Yisrael Yah, as I dig into this more, as I study this out more concerning this, what we call the born-again experience, or this rebirth, born of Yah. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 51, he says here, Behold, take notice. Pay attention. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, Israel. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's pretty quick. The twinkling of an eye at the last so far. For the shofar shall sound, and it says, the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible 
this flesh, this corruptible body, must put on incorruption. And this mortal man must put on immortality. In my last verse, as I bring this to a close, verse 54. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in Teshua, in victory. Hallelujah. Was not victory wrought among the house of Israel at the death of Yahshua HaMashiach? But yet it was sealed even more so when he was raised again. Hallelujah. So let us raise up conditions of Yahweh. Let us not continue to be a people that have been buried, that are dead. But let us allow the rock hawkiness of Yahweh, just as it quickened Yahshua HaMashiach, to rise. Let us rise. Let us get up. Let us stand, Yisrael, and walk in the Torah of Yahweh. And let us go and sin no more, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh has given us all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. that we can live in this life sinless, cleansed, clean, and washed, pleasing unto Yahweh. Don't you want to present your body as an offering unto Abba Yahweh? And a living offering without spot and without blemish. That should be our desire, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We do barak you all that are listening by via of live stream. I do pray and hope that this message did give you some reassurance and some understanding. And like I said, we will revisit this being born of Yah once again. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. So do Yahweh. Let us shub, let us turn unto Yahweh. You know, he says in his Torah, let us turn, even at his reproof, yes. his rebuke, even though many times it is harsh, Yisrael, Yah, he says for us to shub, to turn yes. unto him, to turn at his reproof. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I'll be Yahweh, we do barak you for all things, for your Torah, for your truth yes. that has been proclaimed, spoken to the house of Yisrael, Yah, tonight. And I do pray, I'll be Yahweh, earnestly that we take Heed to what you have spoken unto us. Yes. But you say in your Torah, Yahweh, that those that are born of Yahweh, and we cannot sin. Hallelujah. And we know, Yahweh, that your rule are do, a camp, do camp about the house of Israel. So fill us, Yahweh. Fill our cups up with Yahweh until we want no more. Fill us, Yahweh, that there's no room for the flesh. Fill us, Abba Yahweh, that there's no room to sin. Fill us, Abba Yahweh, that we will walk as Yahshua walked, yeah. obeying you and pleasing you in everything, everything. So we do barak you, we barak you, Yahweh, for those that have been listening by via live stream, those here at Teshua community, and those that have traveled for near and for far, that you would take them back home safely, Abba Yahweh, at their appointed place at the appointed time. Yeah. And all the things we do barak you, in the mighty name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barakiho, Yisrael. Hallelujah.